Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to join the next solution webinar today. And uh, uh, today we, uh, our pleasure to invite uh, uh, Matei and uh, Ding Yu from Innovatrix and uh, as our Facebook Foundation partner. Okay, so uh, today as usual, uh, we were gonna um, introduce you uh, a little bit about NS Witness and uh, some nice new features about NS Witness new version, right? And then I will hand over to Mate to introduce their company and uh, their solution. Okay, so um, let's wait for another minute for gathering more people, okay? And uh, um, yeah, um, actually we are still doing the more deep integration, okay, uh, between NX and the Innovatrix, but so far we have done a little bit. So uh, in today's section, uh, Mate will introduce the company, the technology, and also do some demonstration for you to see how the uh, how our solution works, okay. <clears throat> and uh, uh, yeah, I will leave the session to the uh, to Mate to introduce the company and uh, just a little hint, just a little hint. Um, I I've tried some um, face recognition solution, right? And uh, Innovatrix is, is definitely one of the best, okay, <laughs> one of the best solution I have ever tried. So uh, I think you guys can enjoy the session today, okay? <clears throat> so um, in the beginning, I would like to introduce Ernest Witness uh, as our BMS and our company. They will update for you first. <clears throat> okay. So uh, you guys see my screen, right? And uh, I like, I always like to do that. I use our, our client, Ernest Witness client, to do the presentation. Okay. You can see that I just uh, screenshot my presentation as a picture, 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 and use the our NS Witness client to do the presentation. <clears throat> okay, yeah, that's me. So uh, basically, our client is um, you can consider that as a media player, right? So uh, you can display picture, camera, and also the video. Okay, so that's how I do the presentation. Okay, so let's start. <clears throat> so uh, our company, Network Optics, uh, we are focused on the, to make a, 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 a VMS, right? And uh, our goal, uh, as, I, as, I, as I think, our goal is to make the IP surveillance as easy as possible, <clears throat> right? Uh, uh, maybe you guys think about that before. Uh, when you use the VMS, Usually, you don't know how to do anything you want, right? Because it's complicated, it's a programmer drive. So uh, you, uh, when you want to do some functions, you don't know exactly how to do. So uh, that is a trouble for you, for the end user, right? So we want to make it easy, but powerful, okay? <clears throat> and uh, we start from 2010. So this year is our 10 year anniversary, right? And uh, uh, like two years ago, we realized that uh, in the real case, people are searching for more and more like solutions, but not just a VMS, okay? VMS is important, but uh, they want more about the uh, like AI or anyway, the analytics, right? <clears throat> so uh, we consider to do them also, but uh, that is not easy, right? We cannot do as professional as what they did, right? So <clears throat> in the other way, we make the, our Meta EMP, which is an integration platform, something like that, to make our technical partner can do the integration with us easy, okay? And uh, last year, we make it, okay, we made it. So, uh, so far we have a lot of techn uh, technology partner to do the standard integration with us <clears throat> and the innovation is one of them. Okay. So I think I will just skip those <coughs> and uh, jump to the architecture. <coughs> okay, although I say we want to make the IP surveillance easy, 
but uh, uh, as our VMS is a powerful VMS, you still can see that, okay? Our like architecture is still can be complicated, which is powerful, okay? We put a lot of a row on our NX Windows server, okay? But in short, you can just consider the structure like this, okay? In a project, <coughs> you have some, uh, we call it device, but it's a camera, right? Or DVR and VRs, right? And then uh, uh, as long as we provide the software, so you just need to take a, like a PC or software to install our VMS software and it become recording server, okay? And I would like to say it's an all-in-one server, okay? We have a, a lot of a row of a server, but we put it together into the NX server. So once you install the NX server, this one is like all in one server, okay? And we have a structure, a hive. So if you have two, uh, more than two servers, you can do merge to make the servers become a big system to work together, okay? And the integration is on this part, okay? Via our uh, Meta SDK, uh, the technical partner can integrate their software into our technology, okay? And we have a three type of a client. The first one is a web client, and then we have an application client, and then mobile client, okay? And then finally, we have a cloud. For some reason, the, in some projects, uh, they may not have a fixed IP, I mean, static IP for the uh, servers, right? So uh, basically, you should use your client to log into the server by IP address, right? But uh, in some reason, uh, you may not have the IP address, right? So you can do that in uh, register your server to our cloud, okay? And then use your client to log into our cloud as well. And then we will redirect you, we will forward you to the server. So ensure you can log into your server without any IP address, okay? That makes your uh, like a server implement easier, okay? And I will jump to the uh, Hive architecture, okay? Uh, we don't do, <clears throat> for the architecture, we don't do master and slave, okay? And uh, we don't have any kind of a, like a CMS, to manage all the recording servers. No, we don't do that. All servers are equal, okay? All servers are equal, which means uh, I, you can install the NS server into some machines, right? And then you can merge all machines together to become a big system. And because we do cross play phone, so uh, no matter you use Windows or Linux, which is Ubuntu, okay, or even ARM, we can merge all servers to each other as a big system, okay? So you can do central management, but edge recording, okay? For, for just for example, uh, in the bank, uh, in the bank solution, uh, there, may, there may be a lot of uh, branches, right? And uh, they usually they use a VPN. You cannot ask them to save their stream I mean, the camera stream back to the headquarters always, right? It takes a lot of bandwidth, right? So we do edge recording, <clears throat> but central management, okay? So the benefit is the operator here, for example, this is a Taipei, okay? A Taipei server. The operator in Taipei just log into Taipei, and then he can view his cameras, right? And the administrator in the center can log into you to anyone and then he can view everything together okay it's essential management and of course all the events will be sent to all like uh, operators and all administrators okay so for example uh, any camera fail any storage fail any server fail the headquarter will know it and then like send some guys to fix it Okay.
And also by this architecture, we do fail over as well, <coughs> which means uh, just for example, uh, the six server is in O in Taipei. Okay, O in Taipei. When server one crash, <coughs> for example, this is on the, on the first floor, right? The first floor server crash, the camera will automatically move to another server. You know, like uh, maybe the second, second floor server. Okay, and when this server crash, the four cameras will move to maybe the third floor. Okay, so this is uh, not a typical failover, but uh, I think it's a re really special one because you don't need to set up a standby failover server here to take care of the failover. No, we use the existing server to do the failover. <clears throat> okay, and uh, for the failover, no matter you do the uh, server fail or the storage fail, the failover works. Okay, so uh, you can think about that. Uh, for example, your customer is a convenience store. They open 24 hours, right? And at midnight, the server crash. They may ask you to, to go to fix or something, right? And it's so buttery. So uh, if you have a failover there, yeah, you don't need to worry about that, right? The, the recording is still working, right? And uh, for some big project, you may sign you may sign the man, uh, maintenance contract with them, right? It's like uh, every quarter you need to um, clean your, your 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 servers, something like that, right? And uh, for example, you have uh, six servers in the project, and uh, how about if you want to shut down the server one to clean it, like clean the hard drive, clean the fan, clean the, the cases or something, right? because you have failover, over. So you just shut down, you just shut it down. And the camera will move to another server to record, right? You don't need to worry about no recording, right? You just shut down, clean it, turn it on, the camera will come back. Yeah, everything is fine, okay? So uh, it makes your project, and it ma makes your project easier, makes your customer more satisfied, right? <clears throat> And uh, this is our like a recommendation of the system hardware. Um, basically, for the recording server, we uh, the per server the maximum camera is one hundred twenty eight. Okay, and our recommendation is just i three. Intel i three CPU is enough. <clears throat> okay, and with the sixteen gigabyte memory, it's enough. Okay. And for the like workstation, the one work, uh, the run, the one runs the uh, Windows client, we recommend you to use i5 with a VGA card, okay? Because because we use GPU to do something, to like uh, reduce the loading of a uh, of a CPU, right? So it's just an i5, 16 gigabyte, and one VGA card. Okay, so this is our recommendation of the system hardware. Uh, and uh, uh, you know IPVN from America is a media, online media uh, from America, digital media. They just make a research to um, like to vote uh, what VMS is your favorite. Yeah, and we are now on top five together with Avigilon and the Genetech, Milestone and uh, Exact Vision, I think. Yeah, so yeah. It, it, it's a pleasure, so I'll share with you guys. So uh, we have uh, many features, but uh, I'm sure I already mentioned about that in some other uh, webinar, in some other NX solution webinar. So I will just like skip it. And uh, I would like to address something interesting, okay, like a small search. Yeah, uh, you guys may know it already, um, but uh, uh, because we have a fail over, Right, we make we want to make sure the recording is always working, and the second part is we want to make sure you can easily find your items back, which is play back easily. Okay, so for this example, if we want to search to get into this tool, you just click on the smart search icon and draw on your door, and you can see a lot of red line appearing on the timeline, right. 
which means on that timing, there is a motion. On that timing, there's a motion, there's a motion, there's a motion. So you don't need to like a face forwarding to, to, to play back all the video. You just, uh, our system will just play for you one by one. Okay, so you can see, okay, uh, this guy get in, and then this guy get in, right? You don't need to play back like a, a whole 24 hours or something. You just draw on the door, we play the motion for you. Okay, so it's easier for you to find your playback. Okay, <clears throat> and uh, also, sorry, let me jump to the uh, new feature. Okay, um, we will we already released our new version 4.1, and uh, this function push notification is one of the key features. Okay, one of the key features. Um, basically, you just ensure you can make some along push to your uh, cell phone. Okay, so for example, uh, I make a, so uh, for example, Andy has the, the, the access control system to enter the first floor, but Andy cannot go to the second floor, right? And uh, when Andy tries to go to the second floor, even the security guy is outside, is like a do a patrolling, and uh, the, the guy will still get a notification on his cell phone, like uh, ah, Andy goes to the second floor, okay? Uh, the security guy will get this kind of a notification, uh, something alert, and uh, like uh, the, the, the description, of uh, someone gets to the second floor, something like that, okay? So, uh, <clears throat> so um, this uh, security guy can just click on this notification, and then he can get the playback on this timing, on this moment, okay, from his uh, uh, NS, NS mobile app, okay? So this is a cool feature for the, uh, it's like a real-time publish the alert to your cell phone, okay? So it can be uh, run together with the, all our third-party integration. Like uh, just for example, the face recognition, right? Uh, you use first face recognition to do the asset control system. And when Andy just show up his face to the second floor, the security guy get an alert, right? Okay, Andy is now on second floor, which is uh, uh, Andy should not be there, right? So Andy can, uh, security guy can go, go there to check what happened, okay? And the second one I would like to address is this one. <clears throat> this is like um, system, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> system dashboard. Okay, uh, in on this dashboard, you can see every detail of your system, not just one server, the whole system. Okay, you can see all the alerts like uh, what's wrong with your storage. Okay, what's wrong with your uh, network? What's wrong with your camera and with your servers? Okay. So you can see some detail like, okay, uh, you have a server. Uh, so far I have one server only here. So I just show you what server, right? Um, <clears throat> like uh, the uptime, uh, how long is the uptime and the loading and uh, even the, like how we're back here, right? Your OS, your public IP, blah, 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 everything. Okay. And you can see uh, like uh, the detail of the information of your cameras, right? How many cameras you have and uh, yeah, some information here. And uh, your storage, okay? And you are networking, okay? And uh, also uh, we improve, we improve our, um, uh, let's say that, okay, I cannot click my bar here, okay. <clears throat> and by the way, this is our new logo. <laughs> for uh, NS Witness, because uh, before we just have an icon for network optics, which is NX, right? <clears throat> and now we we give a logo <laughs> to the software, to the VMS NS Witness, so it's a W, okay? <clears throat> so uh, you may know it, uh, we can put the web page, put a web page on the uh, our client as well. So, so just like, uh, oh, I can put that, okay, so weather forecast. Uh, yeah, it's a Singapore weather forecast. <laughs> yeah, you can just 
take a look on your, you know, with the report and uh, this one, <coughs> just, just as I show you the um, dashboard, right, your system dashboard. And uh, yeah, you can put anything here for the web page. And uh, we put, we improve it actually, we put Chromium now on an client, so uh, you can run, will run it better, I think. Okay. Okay. So um, I think I will like to hand over the section to uh, Mate to introduce their company and their software. Okay, and uh, he will also do the demonstration uh, for you. Okay. So Mate, I will turn off my uh, share screen. And okay, your turn now. Yeah, hello Andy, thank you very much. And good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Mate. I represent Innovatrix in the APEC region. I'm based in Singapore. And I really, really appreciate to be here this morning and uh, present Innovatrix uh, and uh, our partnership with uh, Network Optics. So let me say a big thank you on behalf of uh, uh, the whole company. Uh, let me share my screen now and please let me know if uh, you can see it. I, I hope it's on now. Yeah, I can see it. And uh, by the way, uh, if you guys have any questions, yeah, feel free to ask on the Q&A box, okay? Excellent, thank you very much. Uh, so uh, at the beginning, let me tell you a few words about Innovatrix for those who are not familiar with our company. So we are an independent biometric technology vendor uh, based in Europe. Um, uh, as such, we develop our proprietary biometric matching technology, uh, not only for face biometrics, but for fingerprint and iris biometrics as well. Uh, basically, Innovatrix is not specifically from um, the surveillance or CCTV background. We are from the biometrics background, which means we develop biometrics technology and that biometric technology is applied in many different solutions. And we also build those solutions which are specified to uh, specific um, use cases or business verticals, just like CCTV uh, and VMS integrations. Um, Innovatrix is um, a globally recognized biometric solution uh, or biometric technology uh, vendor. Um, we are recognized by NIST, NIST, which is uh, the National Institute of Standard and, Te and Technology, which is the largest authority of um, biometric vendor technology, benchmarking, evaluation. Uh, now, Innovatrix and our face technology is one of the top ranked uh, uh, submissions or top ranked technologies uh, by NIST. So, Innovatrix and uh, its face recognition technology is among the top and the most uh, recognized players in the market. Um, now the company uh, has been around for 16 years and last year Innovatrix was listed as one of the 10 fastest growing digital transformation solution providers. Uh, obviously, as I said, uh, we are not specifically from the CCTV background. We are in general from the biometrics background, but obviously what I would like to focus on today is our face recognition technology. So the face biometric part. And the solution that I would like to present today is called Innovatrix Smart Face, which is our real-time face recognition um, solution for CCTV cameras. This is a server-based solution, uh, which also makes a good fit with uh, an X um, and it makes it easy to, to integrate with an X. Uh, this server-based solution is able to handle um, multiple real-time camera streams, even dozens of camera streams on one single server. Uh, it's a, this is a hardware independent solution, so uh, we can run it on any server, we can run it with uh, any camera, any camera with standard uh, RTSP stream can be just plugged in and SmartFace starts to use it automatically. Um, as a real-time face recognition system, of course, it has all the basic features which are uh, face detection, real-time tracking, uh, face identification in multiple watch lists. Uh, this is also one of our, uh, our strengths, uh, being a company from the biometric background. 
uh, we can handle huge watch lists, even millions of registrations, millions of faces on, on one single server within a couple of milliseconds, uh, we can search it very quickly. Uh, this solution, smart face, of course, um, besides the traditional, let's call it traditional use cases, which uh, are surveillance, security solutions, uh, even business intelligence. Uh, besides that, one of the, one of the most uh, important um, business verticals that we, we focus on and it's, and it's a part of our um, product strategy is access control. Uh, we are using SmartFace not only for surveillance solutions, but for physical access as well. And the way how we do it, um, we are trying to make it a bit different. So we are trying to, to change this access control game uh, using our face recognition technology, creating this so-called seamless access control, which is, uh, uh, this is, this is how we call our product, seamless access control. And I'm going to show you in a couple of minutes in a live demo. So this product, Seamless Access Control, is using uh, smart face, but instead of having a traditional uh, face recognition device uh, installed on a turnstile or on a gate, we just use CCTV cameras. That CCTV camera can be installed on the turnstile, on the ceiling, above the turnstile, next to the turnstile, doesn't really matter. Um, uh, it's connected to SmartFace and the SmartFace server is directly connected to the turnstile or the access control backend. So we make this solution complete and we handle the physical barrier as well. Um, the, the seamless experience that we, are, um, we, we can achieve using SmartFace uh, makes sure that um, the whole scenario is seamless, basically. So uh, there is no stopping at the turnstile. There is no uh, looking into a camera, trying to fit uh, the face into a circle on the screen. Of course, there can be a screen, so we provide all the feedback. If, uh, if you insist on having some feedback um, for the user, we can give that feedback as well, but technically it's not necessary. So what we achieve is a completely seamless walkthrough or even drive-through scenario using just a CCTV camera and seamless opening of the door. Um, of course, it can detect, track multiple people. Uh, this also has a solution for tail tailgating um, uh, uh, elimination. Um, what we use here is basically an additional software layer, which we call intention analysis, which means, uh, which means on top of the basic face recognition features, which are face detection, tracking, identification, there is also an, an additional business logic which evaluates the movement of every person in front of the turnstile, which means we can find out whether that person is intentionally moving towards the turnstile or just walking around, talking to colleagues, uh, leaving for lunch, for example, or intentionally approaching the turnstile and intentionally trying to cross that turnstile. Um, this goes with uh, some additional, I would say unique features as well. Uh, one of them is the so-called um, auto-learning and face template averaging feature, which I would say is really crucial when it comes to, especially when it comes to physical access. Physical access is a use case which is used on a daily basis. So um, I got hired to a company which uh, is using this, uh, this seamless uh, access control solution. Um, I, I make my first registration, I register my face into the system, and then I keep going to work every single day for years. But over those years, of course, I'm changing. I'm, I'm getting older, um, I get a different uh, haircut, um, I come back from vacation, I get a tent, uh, I can gain some weight, I can lose some weight. So my face is basically changing. But this auto-learn function of Innovatrix smart face is um, focusing exactly on this uh, kind of aging issue. So every time it matches my face correctly, it also adds some new features, some new unique features of my face into this so-called average template. And from all those snapshots, which uh, were captured in the last couple of weeks, months, years, it creates this uh, almost perfect uh, template, which, uh, which contains all the unique features collected uh, during that time. Uh, the second special feature uh, that we provide is the so-called passive liveness check. This is, this is really important for anti-spoofing, which is 
um, which, is, which is a big deal these days. Anti-spoofing, not only for uh, this kind of face recognition, but also for EKYC solutions, which is another business vertical that we are focusing on. So anti-spoofing is really a big deal. Uh, there are many different solutions out there which um, are claimed to be suitable for, for this kind of anti-spoofing. Uh, which means to find out whether a photo is a real life photo of a real person or a mask, a 3D mask, 2D mask, or a photo taken from a PC screen or a printed photo or even a replay attack. Um, so all these uh, spoofing attempts can be easily uh, revealed by Innovatrix Passive Liveness check, which uh, it's called passive because it does not require any interaction from the user. So we are not telling the user, move your head up and down, blink with your eyes. Uh, we just take one static photo and that one static photo can be evaluated and we can tell whether or not that photo is taken from a live person or from or, or it's some some kind of spoofing attack. Uh, I'm going to show these features of course in a live demo uh, in a couple of minutes. Um, one more of course um, our world is changing these days. Uh, there are many new requirements which just came out of the blue in the last couple of months. Uh, of course, those are related to the COVID-19 pandemic. So uh, these are important requirements now, which uh, have been raised just recently. Um, mostly those are uh, related to face mask detection, temperature measurement, uh, many customers, uh, uh, businesses, governments uh, require this uh, because of different government regulations, of course. Uh, but just like the rest of the market, we are also responding to these new features. Um, I'm, I'll, I'll be able to even show you in a live demo some of those in a couple of minutes. Uh, as I said, we at Innovatrix, we, um, we do not focus on one specific use case. We are focusing on our biometric technology. And that biometric technology is used in many different solutions which we build on top of that biometric technology. And those solutions are from different business verticals for different uh, use cases. One of those use cases uh, is EKYC. So we have another solution called Digital Onboarding Toolkit from Innomatrix, which is for automatic unsupervised uh, onboarding. Uh, typically it's used by banks and other in institutions, but basically this is an identity verification um, uh, self-onboarding tool, which obviously is integrated with SmartFace as well. So in the demo, um, uh, in, uh, in, in, in the live demo shortly, we are going to use this uh, digital onboarding integration to register into SmartFace. So let's move to the interesting part now. Uh, let me show you SmartFace in action. What I'm going to show you now first is uh, this is a very, very simple, uh, this is a very simple web interface of SmartFace. This is basically just a demo web interface. Uh, it, we, we do not necessarily use this interface in, in production, of course. Uh, we can deliver this interface, we can customize this interface, uh, but basically it just uses the SmartFace API to show and display all the information which, uh, which is available. So of course, of course this is not a, this is not a black box. And by the way, this, uh, this interface is not even part of, of the basic deliverable. This, this is an interface that um, any partner of Innovatrix, any system integrator can easily build just using uh, Innovatrix SmartFace API. So what I'm going to show you here is uh, the basic features of SmartFace, uh, which are, uh, of course, these basic features are pretty much simple. Uh, it does everything that we expect um, a real-time face recognition system to do, which is real-time face recognition, real-time face tracking, identification. However, uh, what I would like to highlight at this point is the reason why Innovatrix is one of the top-ranked players currently in the face recognition industry, according to NIST. Uh, Innovatrix face recognition technology is um, is very powerful thanks to uh, this feature that I'm going to show you now. So of course, now my face is, is clearly visible, it's not covered. It's easily can be detected um, basically from, from this frame, which you can see uh, in this preview now, 
um, I would say any vendor, any face recognition technology vendor can recognize those faces. But what happens when a face is just partially visible or uh, we are facing very demanding, poor environment, poor uh, lighting conditions, or the face is partially covered, just like now. I'm covering the half of my face with this notebook. Or what happens when we are implementing a drive-through scenario? So we have to recognize faces in a vehicle where only the bottom part of the face is visible, the top is covered, there is a shadow by the roof of uh, the, uh, the vehicle, or the other way around. The bottom part of the face is covered. These scenarios are all very, very realistic and um, likely real life scenarios, which are of course very demanding. It's, it's, a, it's a big challenge to, to recognize all those faces from the side, right? So this kind of, uh, this kind of fra uh, frame um, from the bottom, from an angle, from the side, uh, partially covered face, on the sides, shadow, partially covered face, on the top, face in a shadow. So these are, these are very challenging um, environments and challenging situations which um, not all the biometric technology vendors, face recognition uh, technology vendors can, uh, can deal with. And this is what makes Innovatrix solution very powerful. And this is what em empowers our face recognition uh, technology for access control. And also this is what empowers um, NX VMS uh, with integration uh, with Innovatrix Smart Face, obviously. Uh, there is one more uh, big challenge uh, apart from doing this kind of face detection accurately. It's also very challenging to do it quickly. So uh, there is obviously a trade-off between speed and accuracy. And the big deal is to, is to have both. To, to have high accuracy at high speed. Otherwise, we cannot achieve the seamless experience that I'm going to demonstrate now. So let me now move to a more um, practical uh, example. What I'm going to show you now is, uh, is a real-time seamless access control solution. So I'm going to use this camera here. This camera is not connected to anything. This is just, just my webcam which uh, will help you to, uh, to see the scene. And this scene here has a turnstile. Um, obviously, I don't have a real turnstile here, so I'm going to use this virtual turnstile on this TV screen, but the whole implementation is basically exactly the same. And we can deliver this implementation to a real scenario and we can connect it to a real turnstile. Uh, what you can see here is that this turnstile does not have uh, a, a face terminal. There is no device. Um, there is no uh, fingerprint reader, there is no card reader. There is only a CCTV camera next to this turnstile. We can put the CCTV camera on the turnstile, next to the turnstile, on the ceiling, anything, right? And on the left side of my screen, you can see this, I call it the uh, access control dashboard. So what you can see here on the left side of my screen is basically the, the view angle of this turnstile camera. So this turnstile camera is connected to turnstile, to smart face as well. And this is what the camera can see. Good. So the scenario that we are going to try today is entering this facility. So now let me try to enter this facility. What I'm going to do, and you will see me in a couple of seconds on the left side of the screen in the access control dashboard on the access control camera preview screen. So what I'm doing now, I'm trying to approach this turnstile, turnstile and I'm trying to enter this building. Now on the right side of my screen, you can see this whole scene. Actually, you can see what is happening in, in the lobby of this building, for example. Um, now nothing happens, of course, because I'm not registered in this access control system. So before I try to enter again, so this is correct. Uh, now all the personal information is extracted from the, from the document. Now the next step is to take a selfie and verify the identity of this person. This is an automatic selfie taking module, which uh, is giving me some instructions, move closer, move back, center your face. This is important to make sure that 
the final photo will have a decent quality. But before I carry on, I'm going to try something else. This is my PC screen and there is a photo of me on the PC screen. So I'm going to try to spoof it. So what I could have done, of course, I, I could have uh, uh, stolen Andy's passport, use Andy's passport, and then to use Andy's uh, profile photo from uh, LinkedIn or uh, social network uh, to open on my screen and try to verify Andy's, Andy's identity and, and steal his identity. But what happens if I try to onboard with this photo? Of course, the result is passive liveness or liveness check failed. And this is the feature called passive liveness check. There is no interaction from the user. We are just taking a selfie and that selfie, that single frame is evaluated within a couple of milliseconds. And if the photo is not live, of course, we do not let the person finish this onboarding. So now when is the real me, I'm going to take a live photo, move closer, stay still. Of course, now the passive liveness check is passed. And also my selfie is verified against both the black and white photo from the data page of the passport and also the colored photo from the NFC chip of my passport. So now my identity is verified and I'm going to submit this registration. So when this one is submitted, what we will do, I will try to approach the turnstile again. Let's just wait for a couple of seconds. It's still being sent. So when this is submitted, I'm going to approach this again. Um, and let's see what happens when I approach this turnstile after being registered to SmartFace. Um, hey, Mate. Uh, one, one question from yes, me. Please. Yeah, um, you say the the what live live what <laughs> to uh, if you use a picture to do the to do the face recognition and it, it will be fail, right? And uh, this right. one is totally automatic, right? Yes, it's it's completely automatic, uh, which means uh, there is no separate step required. Uh, oh. Some some other. Uh, some other, and this is why we call it passive. Uh, some other um, liveness, liveness check uh, yeah. features uh, might be called active. Uh, when it's called active, it means that some sort of interaction is required from the user, uh, which means uh, the, the mobile app is, is telling you uh, move your head up and down, blink with your eye, or it, it requires some sort of interaction and this interaction is, is then evaluated. So uh, those, those liveness checks are evaluating whether or not you're, you're following those instructions. This, yes, this yeah. is passive, which means uh, we just take one photo, which, which must be taken anyway, because we, we need this photo to, uh, to, uh, to, to insert it into, into SmartFace. So this, this photo must be taken anyway. Um, but in this case, uh, we do these two things in, in one single step. So it's not necessary to take uh, another photo or to run another step uh, with, uh, with the user. We just take this one static, uh, static photo and, and, and this, this static photo is, is then evaluated. So it's completely seamless from the user's perspective. Yeah, so, so you don't request the, the user to do some action to make sure you are a real person, right? Yes, exactly. This is, this is just one single step. There is, it's, it's not required to run another additional step. And also, you don't require any special camera from the uh, surveillance camera or the mobile camera. Exactly. Just a normal this camera. Uh, this, this passive liveness check, which, uh, which was uh, demonstrated now, it used my, uh, my uh, standard, it's, I, my, it's my standard off the shelf phone uh, and the front camera. Uh, basically none of our 
uh, face recognition systems require uh, a special hardware. And, and yeah. we, can, we can easily deal with uh, very low resolution images as well, uh, which means the minimum requirement we have, uh, as we said it, is at least 20 pixels between the eyes. Uh, it's not necessary to have uh, a, higher, a higher resolution. So obviously the higher resolution, the, the better, uh, the better uh, quality can be, uh, can be achieved. But 20 pixels between the eyes is sufficient for us to process that photo uh, in, in, an, in an accurate way. So uh, there is no special hardware needed for this. Okay. Okay. Cool. Because I, because uh, as I know, some uh, face recognition they require like a dual lens camera, right? So you don't need to do that, right? Exactly. Dual lens camera. Uh, uh, dual lens camera is required for some of the hardware-based uh, uh, liveness checks. Hardware-based means that uh, it relies on. Uh, on the different different uh, camera angles, so the dual lens, uh, there are two lenses next to each other, two cameras next to each other, and it relies on uh, the the perspective, and and it's still active in in some way because in that case, um, in many cases, that app uh, requires you to to change the distance between your face and and the cell phone, uh, and what they measure is uh, is the angle. Um, the, the changing perspective uh, from those two cameras. So basically they are trying to evaluate whether or not that, that face is a 3D face or, or just a 2D image, uh, which, uh, which also makes it less accurate, less reliable. But uh, the, point, the point here is that it's still, it's still active. It still requires some sort of interaction and it also requires uh, a special hardware. You, you cannot use it from, from any any phone, uh, any hardware. This is this is a pure software-based solution. So uh, it's no, it's okay. no, no special hardware is required at all. Okay, cool. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much uh, for the question. So uh, let's now continue with uh, uh, this demo. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to try to approach this building again, and let's see what happens now when I try to enter. Uh, this facility. So now I'm in front of the door and I start walking. And while I'm walking, the camera is capturing my face. Now, of course, I'm registered, but what happened here? Could you see the alerts on the screen? Let's try it again. I'm trying to, I try to enter this facility again. I'm not looking for my keys. I'm not doing anything. I'm, I don't even realize that there is some sort of face recognition or some sort of access control. But what I see is no mask. Of course, this is a new optional feature, uh, which is related to the new COVID-19 uh, features, uh, no requirements. So what is required is to wear one of these guys. So now I'm going to put my mask on and let's see what happens when I try to enter this building with a mask on. So on the left side of the screen, you can already see me how I'm putting my mask on. And now I start walking towards the turnstile. So let's see what happens now when the camera sees me in a mask. And what happens is the door opens completely automatically. I don't have to stop. I don't have to look into the camera. I don't, e don't even have to slow down. I don't have to interact with some device. Uh, actually, I'm not even realizing that there is some sort of access control. I just keep walking completely seamlessly. I don't care about getting the access. I'm, I, I don't care about uh, uh, trying, to, uh, trying to meet the requirements. I just keep walking. And if I keep walking and I play by the rules, which means uh, I'm registered, I'm wearing a mask, I play by the rules, there's no need to stop. There's no need to bother uh, those people uh, or the user with uh, stopping all the time, uh, interacting with some device. So this is uh, what we can achieve uh, having this high accuracy and high speed of the face recognition. Of course, uh, to achieve this kind of seamless experience here on the left side on, of, uh, of the screen, now we can see all those uh, entries uh, of that person. Of course, what we need is uh, high accuracy, being able to uh, detect and identify faces while there is a mask on, 
uh, and being able to do this very quickly. Otherwise, people have to stop. There's a queue. Uh, they are blocking each other, uh, and so on. So um, this is uh, this is SmartFace uh, from the access control perspective. Uh, this is how uh, we use our technology to build this complete seamless experience. Uh, we integrate it with uh, onboarding, we integrate it with mass detection, uh, we can also integrate it with uh, uh, any temperature camera so we can extend uh, the feedback and the real-time notifications uh, with, uh, with a measured temperature of that person and we can integrate the whole solution into a complete system including the hardware. We can use Wigand protocol, we can use uh, uh, dry contact to trigger the, trigger the turnstile. So this is how we can make the whole solution complete. Any more questions at this stage? Yeah, uh, and if you have any question, you can just drop the message on the Q&A box and then we will buy you, okay? Sure. Excellent, thank you very much. So uh, let me proceed. Uh, so this was the uh, smart face demo from the surveillance and access control perspective. Uh, but of course, today we are here also to talk about how uh, we work together with uh, an X VMS. Uh, smart face goes with uh, many different plugins. Actually, we have, we have many different extensions of the basic uh, server solution. One of those extensions is the access control module with intention analysis, with uh, hardware uh, level integration. There's another additional module for detecting mask. There's another additional module for, uh, for detecting uh, liveness. Uh, and we also have a plugin for uh, NX integration. Uh, this plugin is uh, using the NX Meta SDK, uh, which means uh, uh, which means is a is a is a it's a plugin that we have to install uh, on top of SmartFace and on top of uh, NX server as well. Uh, however, we we thought and and this is this was the conclusion with uh, conclusion of our discussions between our uh, engineers and NX engineers, uh, this is the most efficient way to, uh, to integrate in terms of uh, performance. We don't really have to sacrifice uh, accuracy. We don't have to sacrifice the quality of the frames. Uh, we can just keep sending the huge raw frames from, uh, from NX to SmartFace. SmartFace can run the whole processing pipeline, including face detection, extraction, tracking, matching, and can send back all the metadata to to NX very quickly uh, without having a network uh, network overhead. So this is the this is the most efficient way of uh, of integration. Uh, we have a metadata level integration, which means uh, we can send a configurable set of information metadata uh, from SmartFace to NX, and we can display it as the attributes of those face objects that we are sending. We can also display it as a bounding box. We can display it on the side panel as, as the attributes of the face object. So let me jump to my NX. Uh, Mate, before, yeah. the, before the NX demonstration, uh, we have some Q&A. Can you please? Okay. Yes. OK, please check. We got seven. Can you see that? You move, move to the top of the screen and you can see the, the, okay, the, the okay, ball. Okay. I, I, I think I can see it now. Uh, okay. So what if uh, you try to cover your nose and mouth with other object and not a mask, for example, your password to cover it? Uh, did your face recognition so? So yes, understand. Uh, so uh, this mask detection works in a way that it detects uh, different parts of the face, different facial features, which uh, are the corners uh, of the eyes, uh, the edge of uh, the mouth, uh, the nose tip, uh, the side of the nose, 
and we, we try to find those features with some confidence. If the confidence is, uh, is high, it means that those parts of the face are visible. If it's low, it means those, those parts of the face are not visible. Uh, so uh, basically, yes, if you cover your face with another object, it will also, it will also pass uh, uh, practically, yes. Uh, so uh, this, is, this is something that um, at this moment is not really possible to, uh, to really be able to detect whether or not that that object is a mask, just like just like other uh, just like other use cases in machine learning, this also needs uh, some data set. So if if we wanted to be able to detect mask and differentiate face mask from other objects, uh, that would require a huge data set of of face mask. And especially now, when face mask are uh, face mask are, are are getting very uh, very common and required. It's also getting, um, it's starting to be uh, uh, a fashion, a fashion thing. So uh, you can already buy many different masks with different, uh, different design, different materials. Uh, right now, uh, right now, uh, this this kind of data set uh, is is hardly hardly available. I hope this this answer this answer the question. Okay, let's let's move on. Uh, we have another question uh, for DOT: the verification process performed on the device or on the server. Uh, we can use all the features and we can support all these features on device and on the server as well. Uh, uh, this, this is important and we realize this is important to cover different needs of different customers. Um, uh, we supply our technology to, um, uh, to many different customers in different countries and uh, depending on the countries, those requirements, requirements might be different. Uh, uh, some countries with uh, with uh, slow internet connectivity, of course, um, prefer to do as much as possible on the device and to send just a low amount of data to the server. Uh, very often they cannot afford sending everything to the server, every single frame for processing. So they prefer to do the most of the job on the device. Uh, so yes, we, we, we can perform the verification uh, even the liveness check, everything we can perform on the on the device and on the server as well. It's entirely up to up to you, up to uh, our system integrator how they prefer to implement their solution using our modules. Uh, next question, if we want to place the camera in a house, estate entrance, will be the different sunlight angle affect the smart face capability? Um, uh, the short answer is, of course, yes. I, I cannot claim uh, it will be completely exactly the same. However, um, uh, as, I, as I showed you at the beginning of the demo, uh, smart face is very powerful in detecting and identifying faces in poor uh, lighting conditions as well, uh, which means we can deal with strong backlight, we can deal with um, partially covered faces, we can deal with uh, bad lighting conditions. Of course, it's very, it's normal and it's, it's expected that the confidence, the, the accuracy can be a little bit lower. However, we still can claim that we are very strong uh, at, uh, at this kind of uh, challenging environments. Next question, uh, according, uh, regarding uh, access control uh, solution, I guess. Uh, if we are to make four pedestrian barrier, how many cameras do you recommend so that, we, so that the four barriers is accessible and the smart face detection is still, uh, still works properly? Uh, our recommendation is 
to set up one camera per, per lane. Uh, if you have a specific environment and for some reason we cannot use one camera per lane, of course we can use uh, one camera which will be shared uh, by multiple barriers or multiple lanes, uh, but this is basically not, uh, not recommended. So in our deployments, we always recommend to basically to replace the phase, the, the phase range and devices, the phase terminals with cameras. Okay, so uh, there is a question uh, about index and the inner mattress. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the question is, we will have a fixed server located at the headquarters and the mobile server to bring the certain event. Okay, uh, we have a pro similar use case about this one. Okay, so uh, that, is a, that is a project like a Porsche, Porsche, okay? That is a sales center of a Porsche. So um, when, when the customer just getting to the, uh, the, the sales center and uh, nothing happened, right? So they reached some VIP, uh, some, some customer is a VIP. So they want to do that. When the VIP coming, they need to, uh, you know, the sales guy, the sales guy is not always in front of the table, in front of the next client, right? So uh, they just walk around. And uh, when there's a VIP getting, their mobile will get a derp. Right, so they just take out the mobile and then check. Ah, okay, there's a VIP coming, and there is a picture there, which is a, a camera view, right? So he can notice that. Okay, uh, and then take a look at the front door. Okay, who is that? The VIP, and then he can do approach. Okay, so that is doable. That is doable between index and the batteries by the mobile message. Okay. Yes, correct. Uh, thank you. At the end, uh, we have. Uh, we have uh, a few questions regarding uh, Innovatrix and NX integration. Uh, this, is, this is something that we would like to cover in the next uh, demo, in the next, uh, in the next few slides. So yes, we, now, now we are getting to the NX integration part. So far, this was, this was the Innovatrix part of the demo. Shall we carry on? Yeah, uh, I see there are still three questions. <laughs> Can you see that? Yeah. Still, uh, yeah. Okay, 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 these three. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, next question. Uh, number plates blur faces and capture all faces in a video stream, but keep X number of best faces that are the same. Uh, uh, okay, so let's, let's go one by one here. Uh, number plates. Uh, number plates is uh, not a part of this solution right now. Uh, so now we are talking about smart face as a uh, face recognition solution. Uh, so this is, uh, this, is another, this is another vertical or another, another use case, uh, of course, related to video analytics. Uh, now we are focusing on face recognition only. Uh, but when it comes to blurred faces, uh, absolutely blurred faces, uh, just like other kind of challenging environment that I was, uh, I was mentioning, uh, can be can be um, processed by Innovatrix Smart Face easily. We do not need a sharp image. We do not need a high resolution image. We do not need a frontal face. We are very strong at detecting and processing faces uh, in very poor environment, as uh, as mentioned. And keeping X number of uh, faces for the same person. Yes, uh, of course, uh, this is supported within one uh, tracking session as well. So I show up in front of the camera. The camera spots my face. Uh, it starts tracking the face and we can configure different strategies in terms of which face to keep, which face to use for the matching. Uh, should it be the first uh, detected face or should it be the, the best face with the best quality? Um, and, and, then, and then we can keep or use uh, just, just some of those. Uh, okay. Uh, Tailgating detection if someone follow behind. Uh, yes, this is a part of uh, our access control module, which is an additional, uh, which is a plugin. Uh, so we have SmartFace, which is the basic uh, face recognition system, which can detect, track, identify faces, uh, send some notifications uh, in real time. And we have this plugin, which uses this information to evaluate 
um, the situation in front of the camera or in front of the turnstile, which means, yes, we detect and track multiple people and this so-called intention analysis, which is a feature uh, as a part of the access control module, the intention analysis is able to evaluate the relative position of those people, just like, uh, just like in the slide I, I showed before. Um, relative position of multiple people and we can configure multiple different strategies for door opening. For example, uh, in a high security facility, if we see a group of people in front of the turnstile and there is at least one of them who is not allowed to enter that facility, we just don't open the door because we, we can consider it as a, as a risky situation. Or just to make it smooth, we can always open the door for the first people, for the first person, if that is allowed to enter the facility, but we shut the door uh, when he crosses the turnstile and evaluate the next person again. And when it comes to a person who is not allowed to enter the facility, we just shut the door. Uh, but the point is that all these decisions for each person are already made in advance. So we see three, five, 10, 20 different people in front of the turnstile. We already know at that moment who can enter, who cannot enter. And we keep tracking those people. We keep evaluating their relative position and we trigger the turnstile accordingly when some of those get close enough and we evaluate their intention that that person, that particular one is trying to cross the turnstile. Uh, what is the what is the maximum uh, what is the maximum angle uh, of the camera that we can work with? Uh, so basically, in in some of those uh, in some of those frames which I showed you before, uh, my face was detected even from 90 degrees. Uh, we can detect faces even from more than 90 degrees. Uh, probably not from from 100 180 degrees, uh, as this question states. Uh, when it comes to 180 degrees, so we are capturing a person completely from the back, um, we cannot really talk about face recognition. Of course, we can talk about body detection, which is, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, also one of our features. Uh, we can talk about body detection, but now when we are talking about face detection, it doesn't really, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not efficient to, to deal with frames where a person is visible completely from the back. So, some portion of the face must be visible so we can talk about face detection and face recognition, right? But basically um, when it, sorry. Mate, sorry to interrupt. I, I assume that they, when they mention the 180 degree cameras means a kind of fish eye or the multi-lens camera to combine the whole screen to cover the uh, 180 degree. So okay. uh, let me sorry. reply for the second part, okay? So basically, uh, we rely on the software for the developing if you use a fisheye camera to cover the 180 degree. If you use a multi-lens uh, or multi-sensor camera to cover the 180 degree, so we can do the face uh, detection through one of the string. It's no issue. But uh, basically, it depends on three sen lens or three sensors. We might need uh, three strings to capture in the smart face. So that, this is how we can support for the 180 degree. But for the fish eye, after the developing, uh, you, somehow you might twist your face image. So it might affect uh, the accuracy of a uh, uh, face detection. Thank you very much. This was, by the way, Tingyu, my colleague from Innovatrix and our CCTV camera expert. Thank you very much for your help. Okay, uh, and last question, addition, uh, an addition to a previous question. Uh, by blurred faces, I mean blur all other face except the candidate, candidate face. Um, basically, we, we do not support this specific function since uh, uh, we, are, we are focusing on the face recognition part. We, we don't really focus on uh, displaying or user. And so this is, this, uh, I would say this is a UI feature. Uh, which is which which is a requirement for uh, for VMS or for video analytics, of course. Um, uh, it's it's not a requirement within uh, within our scope, probably as 
uh, as the face recognition vendor. So what we, what we tell NX, for example, and NX can be one of, our, uh, one of our user interfaces. Basically, we do not force any proprietary user interface from Innovatrix. Uh, but what we tell NX is uh, where all the faces are, um, uh, all, the all the meta information, so all the attributes of, uh, of those faces, and an X or another kind of UI can use this function or a system integrator can, can use this information coming out from smart face to show some of those faces, uh, faces and for example, blur out some, some specific uh, faces. So we position ourselves as, uh, as a technology vendor, not as the complete solution provider. So what we provide is, uh, is an open API uh, we open up the box, we show everything that is inside face recognition, we give uh, a complete output from the face recognition pipeline and our system integrator, which can be, uh, which even can be an X or, or it can be another partner using an X to display the face recognition output from Innovatrix can display uh, or interpret this information in, in any way, for example, uh, using this, this blur. Uh, Mate, let me make up something here. So, uh, so as I mentioned, uh, since we only receive the video streams from the cameras, and if they, I, as my understanding, there is some software in the field uh, that they can do in some, uh, let's say, the video improvement or improvement to doing the uh, video accuracy, like uh, uh, improve the image from the blurred face or from the blocky face. So uh, it could be one of the way to solve this issue. On the other hand, we do have the group, uh, grouping functions in smart face, which will, uh, if the blurred face is, is actually uh, under the threshold, under the, uh, the threshold which we configure and set up, probably we cannot do in this, uh, all these uh, grouping function for the similar or reference uh, faces like uh, the except uh, candidates faces like uh, uh, Peter mentioned in the uh, questions but uh, probably after the video improvement software come out with a good uh, image of quality and then uh, if once is uh, past the threshold and we can do in the grouping as well so it could be one of the way to solve this issue So Peter, hope uh, we have uh, reply your question and answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for the question, Peter, and uh, thank you uh, for helping me out, uh, Tingi. Uh, Andy, uh, shall we proceed? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much. So let me put my screen back, and what I would like to. Uh, do now. I would like to continue with uh, uh, the NX specific part of uh, SmartFace. So this is here a screenshot of NX interface with uh, the SmartFace plugin. Um, I, I think I already covered this. Uh, so what we do, we take the raw frames from NX. In this case, we are not taking the frames directly from the camera, but through NX, which is running on the same server or in the same server environment uh, along with our smart face camera processes and uh, within this round trip from an x to smart face we do we perform the complete processing pipeline and then we push the metadata back to uh, an x uh, this whole round trip per each frame must be done within within 500 milliseconds so we can display uh, we can display the bounding boxes and all the relevant information uh, in uh, practically in, in real time or in a, in a smooth way. So uh, now I'm going to switch to my annex, which is running here um, in, in the same environment. So now everything is running on my laptop. Uh, the demo I was showing you uh, was a live demo. It was happening right here, right now. And uh, this whole demo that I was, I was showing you was also being recorded. Uh, so I have another camera here in an X, which is uh, not the same as my turnstile camera. This is a, this is a different camera. 
but this camera was was watching this whole story uh, that I was I was showing you, and uh, having an X here with smart face integration, uh, we already have uh, some some camera rules configured here. So so basically. If, if we if we show this these camera rules uh, or the plugins first, we have the smart face analytics uh, plugin here. Um, here we have all those uh, attributes uh, which we can uh, which we can feed into uh, an X as the attributes of the face object and some uh, analytics event types which we are feeding here. And once this is done we can set up this camera rule. So this is, I guess, very familiar, uh, or all the, uh, all the NX users are, are familiar with this, uh, more than myself. Uh, uh, so what I have here is uh, basically two camera rules to, to start recording, but recording is running anyway here, uh, and to, uh, to set a bookmark. So for the, for the person identified event here, I have a bookmark rule configured. And here we have this bookmark from today when I was showing the face recognition and the uh, access control solution. Here are all the events uh, that we have from smart face and we have all the face objects from smart face along with those bookmarks which have been created during showing you this demo. So this is these are, this is the footage that, that was, was recorded today, a couple of minutes ago, when I was showing the uh, access control, access control um, uh, demo. Uh, but how it works in, in action in a more, so, so this, is, this is of course not that interesting because it's, it's only me there, there's, there's no multiple people, uh, but how it works in action, uh, this, is now, uh, this is now the same setup uh, with, uh, NX and smart face. This is from our HQ office uh, in Slovakia, in Europe. And uh, these are our, our colleagues here. So what we, uh, what we keep pushing to NX are face objects. All those face objects have multiple uh, attributes. Those attributes, of course, can be, uh, can be configured. Uh, these are some, some basic demo attributes. So uh, the age and gender, which is uh, detected uh, or estimated by smart face, uh, the name of the person, as long as the person is registered into some watch list, uh, those watch lists are also configured. We can create different white lists, black lists, uh, VIP employees, uh, guests. Um, so this is, this is configurable. We can also see which watch list was that person uh, find, found in. And we push all those information into uh, into NX. So uh, this is the plugin which, uh, uh, of course, helps NX to uh, to become a better VMS with a very powerful uh, face detection uh, tracking and identification engine. And of course, it helps Innovatrix to have a very very advanced user interface for our. Um, our face recognition. Okay, cool. Uh, so, Mate, uh, this integration is almost done, right? So, do you have any uh, like a, a release date for this integration? Uh, yes, correct. This is uh, this is a so-called uh, 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 beta version. Uh, you're right, Andy. Uh, so uh, uh, the the release release date is uh, supposed to be end of this summer. So by end of August, this uh, feature, this plugin, should be uh, available uh, in our uh, in our uh, store. So uh, yes, we we can. We can provide this feature uh, right now, uh, if if necessary. Uh, the first uh, official release will be available by end of this summer. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Because um, you may know, uh, NS Windows is really 
just just take a little bit resources, right? So, uh, some of my customer have idea like uh, they want uh, <clears throat> just one machine, just one server, right? And there will be not many cameras in the server, and uh, install a net, both a net and your solution in the matrix together, and it's like uh, you know all in one surveillance and fetch recognition machine something, yeah, for a uh, for like a building or an office, it's quite a milk, right? So we are looking for it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and uh, thank you for raising the uh, the topic of uh, um, hardware hardware footprint. Uh, uh, this is this is also something I would like to I would like to emphasize here. So uh, less yes, of course, as you said, NX has very low uh, NX server has very low hardware footprint. Uh, of course, when it comes to face recognition, it needs some uh, some some level of hardware uh, resources. However, the good news is that uh, uh, we we are we are very flexible at this. Uh, we have different levels of uh, face recognition algorithms. We have uh, uh, faster and uh, of course less accurate. We have uh, much more accurate, but a little bit slower. Uh, but uh, basically, both. Uh, can work. What I was using here, uh, for example, in this in this demo, uh, in my case, I was using I was using the fastest one. So uh, this is the fastest one with the lowest accuracy, which was which was sufficient enough. This was sufficient because uh, the environment is is not not challenging. The the face is is clearly visible. Uh, it's not necessary to use the the most powerful and the the heaviest uh, phase recognition. Uh, so uh, so do we here. So this is the same. It's not necessary to use uh, the highest accuracy all the time. It's only necessary for very very heavy surveillance use cases when uh, people <clears throat> are not clearly visible. They are not interacting with the camera. Of course, uh, in that case, it's recommended to use a decent GPU. But for uh, such simple use case, basically one CPU core per camera is sufficient. So uh, uh, we, we do not require GPU processing for every single use case. Such, such simple use case, one CPU core per camera is more than enough. So are you meaning that uh, if, if a situation is like this, your environment is like this, not really busy, uh, like a one i a core i seven CPU can cover like uh, four cameras, is it? It's a four core CPU, right? Yes, yes, correct. Uh, basically, what, oh, we, okay. what we what we recommend is to uh, is to have a certain uh, minimum clock speed of the CPU. Uh, what we recommend is to have uh, three plus uh, gigahertz clock speed of uh, of the CPU. But uh, as long as we have this minimum clock speed. Uh, we can handle one camera uh, using one CPU core. So yes, correct. If we can have four dedicated cores for four cameras, uh, then we can we can work in a uh, in a not too demanding environment like this, for example. Okay. Okay. What core for one camera? Got it. <laughs> okay. So uh, your 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 demonstration is done, right? Yes. Thank you very much. Okay, so thank you guys for joining the, the webinar today, and uh, we're doing longer today than before, because <laughs> I, I see I see many people uh, feel interested in, in the solution, right? Ask a lot of questions. So, uh, do you guys have any other question? Feel free to ask. Yeah. And uh, by the by the experience, and the uh, Asia people are really shy. <laughs> really shy to ask. So, uh, yeah, uh, if you if you have any other more questions, you can just send us the email, right? And uh, okay, we got a question here. Do we look forward to more features from SmartFace and X in X new integration platform? Um, actually, because <clears throat> uh, innovators are uh, basically providing the uh, face recognition feature to do the integration with us. Right, so uh, I'm not so sure. Uh, Mate, do you have any plan to? I'm not sure. Maybe the 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 Absolutely. face recognition plus, yeah, uh, the ethical system, right? Uh, we are uh, we are very 
technology focused company. So uh, right now, uh, 60, maybe 70% of the company is uh, engineering and R&D. So uh, we keep improving our technology and our uh, solutions all the time. Um, right now, uh, just, just to give you an idea about our current uh, roadmap and what we, what we are currently busy with, uh, we are uh, about to release not just this integration uh, by end of this summer, but we are also about to release our body detection which will be another feature which uh, uh, definitely is worth uh, uh, integrating or extending our NX integration with. So in the next release, uh, maybe not uh, in one or two months, uh, we will have another release of our NX integration with uh, body detection, which will be another object. Now we are pushing face object. Uh, in a couple of months, we will be able to push a body object into and X will be able to um, display the skeleton of a body. Uh, we will be also able to use this body detection for, uh, we had a question earlier. Uh, no, actually it was, it was my misunderstanding, <laughs> sorry. Uh, but we will be able to uh, detect and keep tracking people uh, from the back uh, when a person is, uh, is uh, turned around so we cannot see the face. Uh, uh, as I said, displaying the skeleton, we'll be able to integrate this into uh, access control as well. Uh, will be uh, will, so, for example, the tailgating solution will be even uh, even more powerful. Uh, plus, uh, a few a few other things that we are working on now. Uh, we are going to release a new version of the passive blindness detection, which, unlike the current one which I showed you today, is not only going to rely on the face photo, but is going to rely on the, the body uh, and, uh, and the pose basically. So we will even be able to detect whether or not a person is, for example, holding something in front of their face. Uh, so based on the body skeleton and the body, body detection, we'll be able to, to evaluate this. And of course, push all this information into, um, into an X. So all these features are in progress right now and, and much more is coming shortly. Yeah, cool. And welcome to have a, one more uh, webinar when you are ready <laughs> for the new feature. Absolutely. Yep. Okay, so uh, is SmartFace included as a part of NS within flash and pricing? Um, yeah, no. Uh, we are separate software. So uh, if you want to do uh, a solution uh, both of, uh, uh, with both of us, uh, you just buy NS Windows license key and the Innovation license key. Okay, it's a separate license. Okay. And yes, uh, Andy and, I, and, and yes. I have uh, left our email as a contact in the uh, webinar chat. So uh, okay. for all the attendees, oh. uh, probably you can refer to it and uh, uh, for the pricing issue or anything. Of course, I will discuss with the ND as well. Yeah, yeah actually, yeah, yeah, actually yeah. I had this last slide, I almost forgot. Uh, it, it, was, it was a part of, uh, <laughs> it was a part of my, it was a part of my, my, uh, 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 my templates, which I received from NX. <laughs> How to buy, <laughs> almost forgot. <laughs> yep. uh, yes, this is, this is our, uh, this is the team of our APEC representative. So uh, uh, I'm, my name is Mate, I'm, I'm the, the pre-sales guy uh, in APEC, I'm based in Singapore. And we have, uh, uh, we have Stanley Tay uh, also based in Singapore and uh, Ting Yu who is, who is here with us on the call, uh, based in Taiwan. He's uh, helping me out with uh, camera related questions. So uh, yeah, feel free to, to contact any of us. Uh, we, we are all uh, innovative representatives in, uh, in APEC. Okay, so uh, let me reply Bob's question. Uh, how can we connect with the innovators with NX? Uh, so uh, after the integration is done, uh, they, they will release a plugin. Okay, so you just need to install NX Winners and this plugin and the innovators. And then everything is done for the integration. You can, you can connect all the events from the uh, innovators to the NX. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> and uh, kind of the email is, is okay. Uh, so Bob leave his uh, email here, so uh, you guys can uh, <laughs> introduce him something about the integration. Okay, and does having powerful NVIDIA high-end GPU improve the performance? Uh, Mate, 
you, you yeah, call? thank you. Uh, thank you for this question. So, uh, yes, definitely it helps. Uh, as I said, it's not absolutely necessary. Uh, but I also would like to highlight that um, um, we, we, we have this whole smart face implementation much more flexible than just switching GPU on and off. So the whole face recognition pipeline has uh, internally many different uh, phases. The first phase is face detection, which is uh, finding a face for the first time in a scene. Then we have face tracking. Then we have face template extraction, which is basically converting the face image into a biometric template, which is the piece of binary biometric information, which is used for matching. And then the last step is matching. Uh, the most demanding parts is detection and extraction. So this is what we usually move to GPU. Um, it, it really depends on the whole camera setup. So we, we, always, uh, we always give suggestions and advice on a case by case basis, based on how many cameras you have, what is your required response time, what is your expected traffic. Uh, for example, for example uh, if, if you implement an access control or clearance system into into a huge factory and uh, uh, at the beginning of the shift, thousands of, pe thousands of people are crossing uh, the entrance um, of a building and you have to run that clearin clearance. Uh, it, of course, you have to expect higher traffic. You have an expected or desired response time, uh, a given number of cameras and so on, et cetera. Uh, so based on all those uh, requirements, we will give you advice on a case by case basis. And, uh, Based on that, those suggestions from our engineers, uh, we will, uh, we may or may not uh, move some of those particular steps. For example, face detection and or face extraction to GPU. But uh, the best practice is to uh, just just to give you um, uh, technical information, some some insight. Uh, the best practice is to use detection on CPU, even if we use the, the highest accuracy, so the, the heaviest detection, we still run it on CPU and just to use GPU for, uh, for face extraction, which means one GPU, one powerful GPU can, uh, can support even dozens of cameras, 30, 40, 50 cameras easily, uh, plus a CPU core, one or two CPU cores for, for each camera, depending on the heaviness of, uh, of the detection part. So the short answer is yes, of course, uh, it will improve the performance, but it's not absolutely necessary. Cool, thank you, Mati. So any other questions? Okay, we've got two. Okay, just to clarify, I need the smart face server and NX to test it, or smart face is a cloud uh, server. Um, basically, you don't need NX to test smart face. Smart face is a standalone product which is meant for integration. So uh, you can test smart face. Uh, you can test smart face as a standalone product. You can just install it on your laptop. You can install it on your server. It's not a cloud based. You can install it on your cloud as well, but but you will receive, you as a system integrator, you will receive the deliverables and you can set it up uh, wherever you want. Uh, you can set it up in a cloud, but you can set it up on uh, on premise. You can set it up on your laptop as well. Uh, and then you can test it. You can test it with our uh, built-in uh, demo user interface. Uh, you can just use the API and you can build your own interface uh, to test it. Or you can install NX if you want to have a, a easy and advanced uh, UI, but but no, basically basically it's not necessary uh, to to have both. Uh, is it Mate, let me take uh, this one. Yeah, of course. So, is it possible to integrate in the matrix to other access control? So, like uh, Chi Yu uh, from Taiwan, right? So, uh, basically, smart face we also integrate with uh, several uh, let's say called uh, digital input and output devices like uh, from Advantech or Mosa. So, it could be one of the way to integrate with uh, access control system like uh, through the original IS four A five. And on the other hand, we also integrate with a Wagen converter. So to turn into your face ID into a Wagen uh, uh, car ID. 
So this is how we can work with uh, several access control software to uh, uh, to reach or uh, to fulfill the requirement of a uh, time attendance request. So I believe uh, it's a question, uh, answer for this question. Thank you. Thank you. I feel I feel Innovatrix is really popular. <laughs> we got a lot of uh, questions. Yeah, more than what I did before. <laughs> yeah. So any other questions? Okay. So if we're done, uh, thank you guys for joining us. And uh, yeah, hope you you did enjoy the the webinar today. Okay. And uh, yeah, again, uh, if you have any other questions, just feel free to send us the email. Okay. Uh, like uh, you want to know more about innovations, you want to see more effect, uh, like features, or you want more webinar, you can let us know and then we can arrange. Okay. Okay, cool. So uh, thank you guys. Thank you guys and uh, have a nice day. Have a nice day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a nice day and keep safe.